your arrow marked babblers they are completely drenched and isn't it exciting that we managed to find them it took us a little bit of time because they weren't where we left them this morning or where Jamie left them this morning they had moved a little bit further on and they found themselves a little thicket to lie in and get out of the rain but it seems like some of the cubs have just woken up let's see there's one of them just getting up now and going across the room look at that big stretch now I wonder if it's going to go and try and see if it can suckle. Some of the cubs are still drinking milk from their mom and so they go and they sometimes will go and have a little suckle but look at that. Isn't that sweet? It's a little bit of affection between the two of them so the little cub has gone to go greet its mom and just to reaffirm the bond between the two of them. You might find the mom will start grooming. There we go. You can see the long tongue coming out and so the mom will lick the little cub and there we go. It's going to go for a little drink of milk. First it's just going to groom all the water away and then it probably will settle down right there. Isn't that cute? So Asher, now that we're with the lions you want to know what animals will hunt the water buck that we saw earlier. Well, you're looking at one of them. These lions often do hunt the water buck. They are very good at hunting and they go after the water buck because the water buck is quite a big antelope. So it's a little bit bigger than something like an impala which is our most common antelope here and that will be enough to feed a lot of these lions so that's why they'll hunt them but you'll also find leopard will go after them hyenas wild dogs and even cheetah so all the predators that we see out here hunt waterbuck at varying stages when they get to big adults like you saw just now it becomes a little bit difficult for the wild dogs and the leopard because the waterbuck is a very strong powerful animal but the lions because of their cooperative hunting so they use one another to help in the hunting they can overpower much bigger animals because two or three of them will latch on and they can then pull that animal down so the lions use each other to be able to get bigger animals and that then means that they can feed the whole family now you can see the little cub has just started to suckle there now it's got itself nice and comfy and it's now going to try and get milk it's interesting because these cubs are getting to the age where they shouldn't be suckling too much longer um, the moms are going to start s stopping their milk production because the cubs are getting old enough to survive without it. These cubs do eat meat already, but they are reliant on a bit of milk as well. So Aya, you're asking where the male lions are. Well Aya, in this particular region that we're in, the male lions they don't spend all their time with the females. What we find here is that we get female prides and they then have male coalitions that come in and out and will come to protect the territory but then they'll also come to mate and produce the cubs. And so the males that we have here, we have four males that walk around together that are with this pride at times and they will only really be here if there's a nice food item or if they're coming to mate or if they hear the lionesses close by then they come and investigate but they don't spend all their time with the lionesses um, they tend to want to go and patrol their territory and go and check and make sure other males haven't come in as well as to go and see if there's any other signs of food because there's a lot of competition here so they would ultimately like to have no competition they'll chase the females away and try and eat it so the females don't spend too much time with the males if they can help it it's only really if there's an intruder around then sometimes the females will be close to the males or if there's a big carcass and the males find them on it then you find the males with them oh look at that yawn it's that kind of weather I think dark cold wet weather it makes everybody a little bit tired I think so that's why there's a lot of yawning going on and oh, shaking a bit of water off isn't that cute now these cubs are already quite old they were born in about April May so they're getting quite big now and there are six of them in total so I you also want to know when the cubs will start hunting well, I, uh, the cubs are still a little bit small for hunting, they're a little bit too inexperienced and so at the moment the moms leave the cubs behind and they go off hunting and then they'll come and fetch the cubs if they get something to eat and if they don't get something to eat then they just come back to the cubs just to make sure they're fine. But these little cubs will probably in all likelihood start walking with the pride when they're hunting at about a year and a half to two years and actually they'll start to really be a value on the hunt and actually start physically killing things probably just after two going forward into three years by the time they reach three three and a half they're pretty accomplished hunters and they're able to 
do what they need to do and, and find food for themselves so it's going to be still a while that they're reliant on their moms even though they are suckling that milk production is going to finish soon and then they're going to rely on their moms for meat for the next year or so and in the beginning you'll find that the moms are going to try and teach these young ones so they'll make the, the little ones sit and watch and the babies will watch how the moms move and they learn the subtle little signs that the females have in order to communicate with each other when they're hunting because obviously when they're hunting they can't make noise because otherwise the prey animal sees them so for the first few times they'll just sit and watch and then slowly but surely they'll start to help out and in the beginning they're going to make lots of mistakes and they're going to alert prey animals to them and they're going to miss a lot of time but slowly but surely as they watch the older females they're going to start to learn exactly the techniques that they need and then they'll start to get it right and eventually they'll become a very tight-knit cohesive unit and if they're little females then they're going to stay with their mothers normally for life they'll end up being a part of the pride and so they learn early and then they become a very valuable asset to that pride now you can see that little one is grooming quite a bit so it's probably trying to get rid of all the water that's on it as well as all the little ticks that have crawled on it. Now ticks are a little parasite that we get in this area that live in the grass and when the animals come and lie down on the grass then the ticks crawl onto them and then start to suck their blood for food and so sometimes they've gotten some ticks from sleeping all day because these lions would have been sleeping most of the day today and so they're just getting rid of any of those that might be on there. Also the Inkahuma pride which is the pride that we're seeing now in the winter when we had a very bad drought they had a bit of an outbreak of mange now mange is a little mite that also lives in their skin and causes them to itch a lot and they actually scratch so much that they can lose their fur and so it could also be grooming to get the last little bit of that out you can see some of the cubs have a few little black patches on the shoulders there and that's still scarring from where they've scratched themselves too much from that mite but now that it's raining the mite starts to go away the mites don't like wet weather at all which is really good for the lions well we're going to sit with these lions for a little bit longer and see if maybe they're going to wake up and get going and while we do that i believe brent has got a skull of a lion 